Welcome everyone to the very first episode of the Hope Reformers podcast. And the overall theme of this podcast is that Jesus is alive. And because he is alive, we have a living hope for every and any situation. We have a true hope. And today's first guest will be my senior pastor, Pastor John Lee. And um, I'm going to quick do a quick bio for him. Uh, pastor John Lee is the senior pastor of the Rock Presbyterian Church. Uh, he has been with the church from his birth as a chartered independent church since January of 2013. He's also the academic dean of the John Leland Center for Theological Studies since 2015. He teaches spiritual formation, missions, philosophy of religion, and ethics. And what I want to start with today is uh, a brief testimony. So the reason this podcast even came about was after recording my my own personal testimony from on the Lafe testimonies. It's a it's a YouTube channel, the Lafe testimonies, and the title of my tes- my testimony is "I grew up Buddhist, demons followed me, then Jesus did this," and so I want to give a quick um, five minute version about my testimony. To see the full version, please check out that testimony on the Lafe testimonies on YouTube. But I grew up Buddhist. My parents are from Thailand, so naturally. If you don't know, uh, most, about 95% of Thais are Buddhist. So I grew up with this Buddhist background. And so that was what I knew growing up. And it wasn't until I was about 12 years old where I began to encounter uh, the spiritual realm. So things started happening in my house, hearing voices, doors closing by themselves, just scary movie things. And those things pushed me closer to Buddhism because I needed to find answers. I knew that the spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual realm is real. And so I needed to know more about it. I needed to know what it was, how do I deal with it? And that just pushed me deeper and deeper into um, studying Buddhism and, and trying to find truth. And fast forward till my undergrad years, I was at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and I had heard about Jesus for the first time. And Me personally, I was the type of guy who would uh, debate Christians and tell them why Buddhism is better. And I just told myself I would never become a Christian. But I did hear about Jesus through a friend. And that that did stay with me. I did, you know, they didn't, my friends did invite me to church and I would visit, but I was never truly interested in in, in Christianity. Around the same time, I started suffering with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder and depression. And I fought with that, struggled with that throughout my 20s. Now I'm in my when I was thirty I attended the University of Maryland Balt sorry University of Maryland College Park and there while I was studying for my master's degree I had other another spiritual encounter where I actually saw something with my eyes. Now that drove me to really find answers because I knew something was wrong, and I went to the Buddhist monk uh, at the temple the Buddhist temple where I would attend. He's my he was my spiritual mentor. And so I asked him and he gave me some advice. And I was basically told to share my merit with the spirit. And so I went back home to my parents' house and I meditated. And it's at that time where I shared my merit with the, this spirit that I that I felt was in the room. Now, from that moment on, it was cold. I felt cold. I felt like a constant breeze for the next two weeks. Lights were turning off and on by themselves. Scary things were happening in the home and I just had to leave the house. I ended up even having to stay at the Buddhist temple and sleep there. I had to ask the monk for a room because I was scared. I didn't know what to do and I didn't have answers. Now, one night I I was in, I was going to my car and I, I turned on the radio in my car and it's a pastor, it's a preacher speaking. And the message I took away was sometimes challenging and difficult things happen in your life. God allows it so that you'll meet him. So I took that as, okay, well, if all this is happening that I would meet God, then let me let me visit the church and find out. So Sunday comes around and I go visit uh, the, the, the church where I now attend. And I had no intention of socializing with anyone I knew there. I just sat in the back. And I needed to find answers. Why Why am I here? Why was I led to go to church through this radio? 
And if God is trying to speak to me, I'm going to give him a chance to speak to me here. Now, the, the senior pastor, who, who, is, who was Pastor John Lee, uh, started talking about what it would feel like if there were demons around. And what he described was what I was going through. And so that really was highlighted for me. And I knew, okay, well, something's going on here. What this man is describing is what I'm going through. You know, I was led to come to church through the radio. Okay, what's going on? And so I remember two days after that, I ended up going to Pastor John's house and he tells me about Jesus. He tells me about Jesus, um, about how he, he, he lived the perfect life, the perfect sinless life. He took my sins and everyone's sins upon the cross and he paid for them in full. And he didn't just stay dead, but he rose again on the third day and he's alive now. And, and he is, through him, we have this gift of salvation that's accessible to, to everyone. We just have to receive this gift and to, and to put our faith in him. And so Pastor John's telling me about this. And I was so desperate at that point, and I, I needed to change. Nothing was helping me. The Buddhist rituals weren't helping me. Buddhism wasn't helping. Meditation wasn't helping me. And so I said, okay, if, if God is really speaking to me, I'm going to take this leap of faith, and I'm going to put my trust in Jesus. And and I did. So Pastor John prayed with me. I, 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 I prayed along with him. And I left thinking, okay, I'm a Christian. Now, the, Jesus set me free. He completely set me free from these demons. I, I, I'm not struggling with OCD and depression anymore. And I, I give all glory and praise and honor to, to, to God. And I'm just so thankful. And because, because it hit me that Jesus is real, everything in my life changed, everything. And so today we're going to be hearing from, from Pastor John about uh, his perspective on what happened. Uh, that that day I attended church, um, that day I was at his house, and 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 more. So please enjoy today's episode. Stay tuned. Uh, you're going to be blessed. Welcome everyone to the Hope Reformers podcast. I'm going to w- welcome my special guest, uh, Pastor John Lee, my my own senior pastor. So welcome, Pastor John. Uh, would you would you mind telling um, our audience about a little bit about yourself and about how you came to Christ, your testimony? Yeah, I'll give the short version because the real long version is going to take a few hours. Uh, so I did not grow up in a Christian home, and um, and uh, I, I, I in eighth grade anyway, I I skipped school. I was playing hooky, and uh, and I turned on the radio, and the the radio preacher said Jesus is coming back, and he's going to divide the sheep from the goat, from the goats, and I, I thought. What Jesus is coming back at that point, I believed enough about Jesus in in terms of uh, that you know he's real, but uh, but we didn't go to church, and so I so I quickly got on my knees and I said, I don't want to be goat, I want to be sheep, and so that was my prayer, and that and I I also pray, Lord, I I need to go to church. Again, my parents didn't go to church, so I didn't go to church. And so about two weeks later, my father stopped me. Uh, I was walking from one room uh, to another room in the house. And he stop, he stops me and he says, all of your friends are American, uh, meaning they were mostly Jewish kids living in Bethesda. And he said, you don't know who you are. There's a Korean church that's starting uh, down the street on Wilson Lane. And so he commanded, he told me, you got to go to church. While I'm listening, I know God is answering prayer. So I started to go to church as an eighth grader in 1980. And, 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 uh, and I'm learning about the gospel, learning more about Jesus. But I knew I haven't fully given my life over uh, to the Lord, uh, not until 10th grade. And so this is the time where my life really changed. The so summer of my 10th grade, this is 1982, I'm at a conference. And, and during an evening of the conference, there was a, a, a hymn that we sang. And as soon as I sat down, the first thought was, uh, all these older white folks were my brothers and sisters in the Lord. That was the first thought. And then the second thought I had was in response to what I had seen 
uh, uh, visually. I mean, it was a it was a, the cross shining like uh, the sunlight uh, in the upper left hand field of vision, like up here for me. And and uh, I said to the Lord, "Why? Like, why did you die for me?" And He said, "Because I love you." And and so then I said the same question, "Why?" Because I love you. And this went back and forth. And at each time I heard that answer, I, I started to cry. It got more intense. And so I, um, my my body froze, got paralyzed. I couldn't move my hands. I was in tears. I finally got home. And uh, one side of my body really got hot. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm going to burn to death. Spontaneous combustion, you know. <laughs> and so I panic and uh, douse my left arm with cold water in the bathroom but then all through the night uh, i was in tears i was thinking about the love of jesus listening to a song and i couldn't wait to read the bible i couldn't wait to go to go to church everything looked different and and uh, uh, and soon after that experience uh, a statement kept on echoing in my brain and that is if jesus is real everything changes and so with that thought, I started to read a lot of books uh, from the public li library, uh, Bethesda the Public Library. And I didn't know who these authors were, but I just ended up realizing uh, the, the, the authors later, like C.S. Lewis, Francis Schaeffer, uh, different, different people who wrote on theology. I was so hungry. Yeah, and and uh, and that was the start. I, uh, and I ended up going to Christian college to, to 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 you know satisfy that hunger. But it's kind of interesting because for me, uh, uh, once I realized Jesus is real, I, I had to find out what does that mean. <laughs> what does that mean uh, for politics and philosophy, right. everything? And so that's that was the. Uh, beginning of this journey and from that moment on i would say from my 10th grade up to now that's what 82 up to now 2023 i've been on the steady narrative steady story i have never veered off in terms of my walk with the lord mm -hmm. and that that realization that conviction that if jesus is real everything changes that statement is still very much relevant to 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 my thoughts yeah and, and even my outlook yeah wow and so when you were at the conference and you saw the, the cross and then you heard god ask you or tell you like you know i love you and you said why and all, and you were having that conversation with the lord had, had that anything like that ever happened before or was that no, no this is all brand new this is everything is brand new the the visual experience the hearing the voice uh, the paralysis in my hands, the tears, the fire, and I had because it was all new. I I, I didn't know what to make, how to make sense of it. I knew it was God, but I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. I didn't even have the language, right, right. and and so it's I'm just responding to the voice, to the to the visual cue, the the cross that's shining. I know it's the Lord. But I don't know what it is. And it was much, much later looking back. So, my goodness, that was the Holy Spirit. Wow. You know, that was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, filling of the Holy Spirit. So much later, uh, many years later, then I came, I discovered the language to describe what happened. But wow. back when I was in 10th grade, I, I was just reacting without yeah. understanding, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you know with my own story i can relate to that that realization that wow jesus is real and because i realized that jesus is real i was i was so hungry to get to know who he was and yeah. again like you i didn't have the language i didn't have the theology behind it i just knew okay jesus is real and now my life has to change but with my own testimony i went through you know weeks of uh, demonic oppression and that had led me to one Sunday, I, I showed up at your church and, uh, you know, you were, you were preaching and I, I was, 
I'm just, I was I was confused for, at first when I was thinking that you were preaching about demons, but you were actually sensing something, and then you start you just happened to share about demons. And for me, being a listener, I was like, wow, it, what he's saying is exactly what I'm going through. Now, what what do you remember about that Sunday that I that I stopped? Right, right. you know, it's still pretty vivid, and uh, I I know you were there, but I wasn't thinking about you. You know, I mean, it was <laughs> it was, but it was during worship, uh, and then I. And as I'm wor- worshiping, I feel cold wind swirling around people. And so before I spoke uh, the Sunday message, right after the, the worship time, I just asked people, did you guys feel this? Did you feel the cold wind swirling around around you? If you're feeling that, I said, that's demons, <laughs> you know. And I so I just wanted to inform people about what that cold wind was and then i i went uh, to preach you know okay. I, I went to preach and then i remember after the sermon you came up and and you said uh you know that cold wind that you mentioned i'm i experienced it but right. then you said something that got my attention he says but that cold wind is inside of me yeah, so i knew you know you had some kind of demonic issue you know it's not just outside but it's inside of you and then i said if you have time why don't you come to my house you know wednesday and so let's chat and 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 that's how our conversation and our friendship actually began at that time you you coming over yeah i think that stuck with me so much uh, when you shared about the demons that i I don't even remember what you preached about that day, but all I remember is what you were describing and mm-hmm. and what how you explained it, what it was. Because for those two weeks, I was literally feeling that cold wind. And so when you said that, it really... Because I, I had come because I felt like the Lord spoke to me through the radio to come to the church. And so I, was, I didn't know what to expect, but I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a chance and I'm just going to sit in the service. And after service, I'll just leave, right? But that really caught my attention. And yeah, I... I remember going up to get prayer. I think you had to leave early that day, but whoever was there, they did pray for me, but they told me to be truly free of what you're going through. You need to uh, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I was still holding on to the Buddhism, so I, I said no. But they had prayed for me, and I did feel a little better, and I had left, um, but that night was pretty pretty scary, pretty bad. So I knew... Something had to change. And so I, I come to your house that morning, the next morning, and you know, I remember sitting in your kitchen and you you shared to shared Jesus with me again. And um do you remember do you recall that uh what, what right, 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 I right, I do remember because <laughs> when you came to the do- door, you still had your hat on and gloves on. And it wasn't like a super cold day. It, no, it was no, a no. it was a kind of cool spring day, but it wasn't super yeah. cold. And so you came in and, and you explained a bit more that you had, uh, uh, you know, experienced the, the cold wind. And at that point, I, I briefly shared the gospel and, and addressing that, I said, that's demons inside of you. <laughs> and I said, if you want to be truly free from that, if you have Jesus right. in your life, the demons, that cold wind will leave, the demons will leave. And so that was basically the content. And at that point, I think you were ready and said, yeah, okay. And so then we, you know, uh, prayed and you say, okay, Jesus, come into my life. And yeah. then I said, let's meet again next week. And so, you know, then you came. And then I asked you the second week when we met, um, I said, any difference? And you said, yeah, uh, there's still cold wind, but it's no longer inside of me. It's outside of me. And I knew, hallelujah, the demons had come out of you, but but they're still harassing you. And so I explained that, you know, they're outside of you. Uh, they're unwilling to completely leave. Uh, but uh, eventually you're not going to experience that. And then the following week, uh, you didn't have your hat and gloves on and and that's the time you said I was at the library and I felt the warmth from the, from you know, from your foot all the way through your body, and I knew that was the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So, like with you, every week there there was something dramatic, something dramatic in terms of uh, advancement, 
that God was doing something significant every week. And as I remember those uh, meetings very clearly, nothing was vague. It was very, uh, it tracked <laughs> on a weekly basis, you know. So you, you knew though that, I remember you had given me advice. You said, you said something along the lines of even, you know, you have Jesus and, and you're free, but it doesn't mean that the de demons will stop harassing you or, or you may still feel some spiritual battle after this. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess one is like, I guess, how did you kind of know, I, I, I guess you've had experience in this area, but how did you kind of know that would happen? And also, do you remember the advice you gave me to kind of deal with that? Especially as a new believer, I didn't know really anything about spiritual warfare. So. Right, right. I mean, I'm, a, lot, a lot of that knowledge that I had was based on uh, experience uh, in, in terms of ministering to people who were free from demons. And, and one of the things I noticed early on uh, was that the demons will leave the person, but they but often they wouldn't leave completely. They would come back and harass them, oppress them, scare them. And so, so, uh, so that was uh, my experience. And I, I kind of uh, thought that that sort of makes sense. Uh, in a strange way, the demons are familiar with you. Are, are, they're, they're familiar because they're, they're personal beings. They have a, in, in a perverted way, have a relationship with the person. And so they they still want to hang out. It's almost like breaking out of a bad gang, you know. They they still want to, you know, uh, be part of your life. They don't want to just leave. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I knew the demons had those kind of habits, tendency. And so now I don't exa remember exactly with the advice I gave, but I think it's probably along the lines of like James four seven, you know, submit yourselves then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you right. and so it, and so resisting in Jesus name I, I might have shared you know if you're feeling it if, if you're feeling like the demons are around you you just tell them in Jesus name get out and you persist in that and so yeah. I think that would be the number one advice if you if you're being attacked just use those three words in Jesus name because that's the authority the yeah. demons are not afraid of us. They're afraid of Jesus. So we're, we're saying by the authority of Jesus, leave. And they have to obey, you know. And so it depends on uh, the context. For some people, worshiping, will, will, worshiping the Lord will relieve them of that harassment. Uh, but the basic principle is in Jesus' name, every knee shall bow on earth as and, and in heaven. And, and so... Uh, demons are creatures, uh, and so they must submit and and submit to the Lord. Yeah, and so you just persist, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, and that and that's what happened to you. Yeah, yeah, I remember even um, after that, uh, you know, at the time I was at my parents' house, but I remember just from the time I I, I accepted Christ, the the atmosphere in my in my parents' home s slowly started. By atmosphere, I mean like just the feeling of like heaviness or like just this uh, strange feeling in the house. It get, kept getting better and better, right? And I would often have, I had several dreams after that where in the dream I was fighting, like fighting demons. So yeah. it was really interesting where I would have, I think one dream I, I had the kind of like Iron Man armor, mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was see through, mm -hmm. but I was like fighting a demon in the dream. And it actually felt good. You know, I woke up feeling good and almost like I was, you know, there was a spiritual battle going on. Um, the Lord was fighting on my behalf. And the, even, you know, after weeks, months went by, the the the, the feeling in my, my parents' house just completely different than where it was before. And so it was interesting along the way. It was almost like a crash course in spiritual warfare that I was going through. <laughs> right. And I remember visiting your room and your house and, and the... Uh, so the stories you tell me tell me immediately that there were a lot of spiritual activities around you, and 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 uh, and 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 they wanted to not lose you, so to speak. Uh, the the demonic forces did not want to lose uh, uh, you, 
you know, maybe they saw some potential in you. I don't know, you know, what exa what the exact reasons were. And so, as you said, uh, this is a spiritual battle. And in a battle, there is, there's conflict. You know, there is, it's, it's, it's not a game, it's a battle. And so, uh, but all battles uh, end up with uh, uh, either a loss or a victory. And we know in Jesus, uh, the, the, the battle, if it's, if you persist, if you resist the devil, I mean, you're going to end up on the victorious side. And so that's what you were engaged in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to ask you a little bit about, because for, for me, uh, the real, the realizing that Jesus is real ha has been also a big impact in my life. Just the realization, there was definitely a before and after for me, like, because Jesus real, is real, everything changes. And I, it was the same for you. And even lately, you've, we've been talking about Jesus is real and that, that, that just changes everything. Could you talk a little bit more about, about that? Like what, what that means to you. Right. I'm, I, there's so many aspects to it. If yeah. Jesus is real, everything changes. And so one of the questions I have, well, what does it mean everything? And, and what, one is outlook, you know, or philosophy, how you think about life, yeah. what the purposes of life are, and, and you think about values. And, and, and so it's uh, in the area of worldview, outlook, perspective. So, if Jesus is Lord, then he's the only one worthy of worship. If Jesus is Lord, then no other power comes close to him. And if Jesus has already won the battle over sin and death, then we know the world will end well. And so uh, it, it touch every aspect of our thinking, both big and small. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and But it's not just... Um, ideas you know so initially i was thinking my my, my i was interested in in uh, thought and perspective and philosophy but if jesus is real it also means he has power and authority and so right. then when it comes to our own personal lives whether it's uh, let's say depression despair anxiety mm -hmm. sickness uh, brokenness trauma well jesus if Jesus is real, then he can address that, and he wants to address that. So it's not just all philosophy or theology. Jesus wants to bless us in like a practical, concrete way. Relationships, our future, our calling, you know. And, and so anything that's created part of our lives, well, yeah. Jesus is going to be relevant. If Jesus is real, everything, literally everything, is impacted. Yeah. And, and and so it's a, it's a pretty big truth, you know, and the consequences, implications are, of course, huge. And so, so different seasons of my life, certain aspects of it, whether it's power or truth or healing, you know, different aspects get highlighted. And so that's why following Jesus is so fascinating. There's like a real fascination with Jesus because it's he's like the complete opposite of kind of predictability and boredom. He's always fascinating. He's always doing something new and something that's surprising, you know. And so it's, it's, it's a wonderful right. <laughs> thing to to experience yeah i mean i remember before accepting christ i remember thinking you know if if you know all religions are are good in, in their own way and i i thought you know if if buddhism is good and christianity is good i'm just going to stay buddhist because it's just more convenient you know my family's buddhist i already know like what it's teaching and and the practices so might as well stay buddhist but what had changed was if jesus is real then that that changes everything. It, it can't just be every religion is good. It's there is there is a real God. There's a real person named Jesus that that is God. And and once I put my faith in Him, I every, all those times where I was wondering what's the purpose of my life is is life just uh, going to school, getting a job, getting married, having kids, and then dying. You know, it's just 
uh, what's the point of my life? What, why am I here? But those, those questions get answered when I know that Jesus is real and that, that he created me. And so kind of like what you're saying that the realization changes everything. And so I, yeah, it's just, you can't help but change the way you see everything once you realize that truth. Yeah. Um, there, there may be people now listening to us that are struggling maybe with their own uh, spiritual attacks, demonic oppression, some of whom may know Jesus, some who may not. Uh, what, what advice could you, could you give to them now? Well, let me begin with the good news. So uh, no one needs to be a theologian, me meaning an expert in the Bible. Ex you, don't, you don't need to know everything about God. And, and so uh, even a little knowledge uh, could be very powerful. And that little bit of knowledge is Jesus is real. Jesus has supreme authority. And so even for a non-believer, if those thoughts, those concepts are understood well enough, that can be applied. And so even for a non-believer who's in desperate situation, that person could say, they could even put it in a conditional. Jesus, if you are real, help me. Okay, that's a powerful prayer. Jesus, if you are who you say you are, or who the Christians say you are, what the Bible says you are, help me. And so a cry of help is a prayer to the living God. And so that's at a very, you know, kind of basic level. Now, if you are a believer and you are, you, you are in a relationship with Jesus, you trust in Jesus, then you can use in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Again, you know, you don't need the full in-depth understanding. What you're saying is, Jesus, I stand uh, by your authority. I am under your authority. You are... You are the Lord. You are the one in charge, basically. That's what, what lordship is. And so I stand under your authority, and under your authority, I, I talk to these harassing spirits, and I tell them, I command them to leave. You know, and so for the believer, uh, that's, that's, you know, uh, that's the uh, way to go forward, you know. Uh, now, for the non-believer, if they really want, as I shared with you many years ago when you were in, in my kitchen, if you want, if you're a non-believer and you want something long-term permanent, in addition to Jesus help me, you could add Jesus come into my life. Jesus, I want to get to know you. Jesus, I want to follow you. So you invite Jesus into your life and then you will have a permanent solution you will be permanently set free and so that, so that's the good news you will be permanently rescued permanently you know safe and secure in him so that's what i would uh, encourage the non-believers to to do just Amen. jesus come in i want to get to know you come in i invite you yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. Um, you know, as we, as we wrap up this episode, could we, could you, would you mind closing us out in prayer and praying for, for us? Lord, I just thank you so much. Uh, both I and I are, uh, not only witnesses of your reality, we have both benefited tremendously because you are real. You both set us free. You, you, you both gave us meaning uh, in life. Now we have a purpose for living. And when we think about the future, we, our hearts are full of hope and joy. And Lord, what we've experienced, we pray that that will be true, especially for people who do not yet know you. So what we have experienced, we pray, Lord, that others hearing this podcast will experience it as well, because you are real. 
And I pray for those who are your friends already, followers of Jesus. And I just ask that you would encourage them, that, that, that you are with them, that your power, your hope, your healing, your joy, the many facets of who you are, are all available to them. And so, Lord, we ask for both non-believers or yet to be believers and believers that you would continue to impact our lives in profound, beautiful, healing, constructive ways. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor John, for, for joining us today. And for everyone else, uh, please join us for the, the next episode of Hope Reformers, where Pastor John will be back to share some more. All God bless right. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Hope Reformers podcast. We are in our launch month. So each of the five weeks of this month, we'll be airing an episode of the podcast. And after that, we'll be switching to once a month. So please like, subscribe, and Thank you so much for your support. God bless you.